Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Siratori. I'm your co-host Cynthia. Uh, Bonnie Siratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com. In today's episode, we're going to be finishing off our series on the past lives and soul's journey. So this is part four. Please check out part one, two, and three. Links will be in the description below. And uh, we're going to finish things off with a bang today. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, a question about agreements and contracts. I'll also be talking about how um, we could actually know what our memory, past life memories, whether or not they actually are our past lives or not. And then we'll end this episode with uh, an exercise to connect with the pure awareness within that Bonnie talked about so much throughout this series on past lives. So Bonnie, how are you? Your uh, environment today is different. Your yes. background is different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm back in California, <laughs> um, house sitting for good friends of mine, long, long, long times friends that used to be a part of my Renaissance Center. I'm not part of it, but they, they actually, one of them lived at, well, no, his wife, ex-wife lived at the center, but yes. So I'm here in California, two miles from my son, which is also lovely and fun. So yep. Uh, Sonoma, California. Very close to me. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. So uh, let's get into today's episode. So I have a question about agreements and contracts, and you did touch upon this a bit in the part three, maybe even part one, um, where you talked about how um, we have these agreements and contracts we make with ourselves and with other souls to have certain experiences. And, and we have these agreements with other souls to play particular roles for each other mm -hmm. so that we could have these particular experiences so we can know ourselves in our issue, in our wounding and, and go through them finally once and for all. And, um, and so my question is about, um, do we make these agreements and contracts like in like in the in between lifetimes, that realm? Mm -hmm. And um, can you talk a little bit more about that so we could understand like how that works, how that happens? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So on some level, every we do make agreements with everything and everyone. What I mean by that is you don't just haphazardly have someone attack you or undermine you or do things to you at a soul level, okay? We as souls evolving have had massive experiences. And if you think about even if you just considered hundreds of lifetimes and each lifetime you have interactions with other humans and soul dances happens and hurts and wounding and all that happens. The thing is, is that we have agreed with one another to co-create situations, events, to play things out. Ultimately, everything really is about the soul's evolution, the soul evolving and the soul waking up and the soul knowing itself in all ways, which brings it back to the consciousness, the pure awareness of creation itself. Okay, so literally creation is wanting to have experiences in physical form. And each and every one of us is, is an experience for that, okay? So even though we feel like we're separate, creation really is the all that is, and that's the only thing that's having experiences. So we as souls, we're like little splinters of consciousness of creation, kind of like this. I've done this before. So here's the all that is. We're all just little aspects of that. And of course, we all forget. So we think we're all these little separate little, little beings when in fact, it's all just creation. The thing is about agreements and contracts is we do make those agreements and contracts in the in-between. Sometimes we actually make agreements and contracts for future lifetimes, several lifetimes down the road, so to speak, into the future of incarnating, depending on what it is that we're unraveling, depending on who it is that we want to make these agreements and contracts with. So I just want to say, too, that, yes, we even are making agreements and contracts with the powers of darkness or evil energies, because as a soul evolving, how can you possibly know something without direct experience? You cannot. Okay. So keep in mind, everything is direct experience. That's how we learn and grow. Someone, I mean, I'm sure everyone's had experiences where people say, oh, don't go, don't do this. Don't walk down that pathway because this will happen or, or don't buy that product because of this will happen or whatever. And what do we do? 
we have to do it ourselves, right? That's the way we learn and grow. So it's the same for everyone at a soul level. So agreements and contracts are given the go-ahead, giving permission for us to do soul, what I call soul dancing with our soul family and to have certain experiences. And again, it's always to activate whatever isn't cleared, whatever we haven't fully unraveled yet, whatever um, wounding, misperceptions, beliefs, conclusions, uh, programming, you know, the poor me's, the victims, the knowing ourselves in all ways. That's how we know creation is to know ourselves in all ways. So agreements and contracts are binding. They're binding. You know, we make them. And then what happens is, is because we don't remember, like we come into the physical form, we don't remember that we've made these agreements and contracts and we they're anchored in our subconscious. So let's just say we want to know ourselves in lack and feeling unwanted or feeling unloved or feeling like we don't belong. So what are we going to have happen? We're going to be ostracized. We're going to be rejected, you know, things like that to activate that, that frequency so that we can go in and surrender to that and then unravel it. So agreements and contracts are made even right here, right now, Cynthia, you and I have agreements and contracts together and Everybody on the team does, okay? Everybody we do have may have experiences with. It doesn't mean everybody we walk down the street. It doesn't mean we have an ex- have that connection. But anybody that we're interacting with, that we're having deeper experiences with, we do have agreements, okay? And they're going to play out. And it's up to us, you know, to say yes to these experiences so that we can be done with them, especially if they're negative. So the yes, agreements and contracts are what we do. They're vital. They don't just go away. I think that um, it also, this idea really will help people to feel more empowered because it, it, a lot of times when people are learning about this, they they might feel um, like they're a victim, but if they understand that they have made these agreements and contracts, they actually want to have these experiences. And I'm and also my question was something about like, um, in between the lifetime, we choose our, our some of these experiences specifically um, to go through them and with these soul families. So uh, I have a question about how we actually get rid of the agreements and contracts. So from my understanding, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I know you will. <laughs> 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 but there, from what I understand, I think there's two kind of ways to do it. One is, let's say, um, let's say I have an agreement to know myself in lack. And I do, I actually go through it completely. I know it completely. I surrender to all those emotions, every single nuance of it, everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm essentially fulfilling the agreement and contract I have with myself and that would nullify it. Right. Right. Yes. But then, but then there are other agreements and contracts, like you talk about with the powers of darkness, you can't fulfill those. (laughs) They have to be broken. Yeah. And so, yes. Yes. Can you talk about like the nature of like maybe different agreements and contracts and uh, what could people do just to start with? Because I know that if this is a very deep topic. You teach your students how to do it mm-hmm. in a very deep level. We can't do that, of course, here in this podcast episode, but maybe just give people a little intro to some of that, mm-hmm. I guess. Right. Okay. So agreements and contracts, like like legal agreement, they're binding. Okay. They're binding. We don't just go, okay, well, I, I, did, I changed my mind. I want to be done. It doesn't work that way. So for example, what you're talking about, you wanted to know yourself in, in lack, lack energy. Okay. So here's how we know that we're done with an agreement and that we've actually learned. And now we got the lesson and now we're done with that. When we have those kinds of agreements, once we know it, the, the, the agreement and con is it dissolves, it's over, okay? Because that's we've fulfilled it. So what happens is, is you as an individual, now that you've gone through all of the emotions and all of the angst and all the frequencies, so that you no longer even can't even find the thought around lack, okay? Like this, I know I need this, I don't have that, whatever. So the 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 thoughts are now gone, the emotional reactions are now gone. And your life is changing and the frequency of lack is no longer your life. Okay. The energy starts to shift and change. When you've, when you've reached that, that point, you know, you're done. Now, the difference between dark force agreements is this. When we open those doors and we say yes to using the powers of darkness for our own personal gain, for power, for money, for wealth, for, you know, these negative things, what happens is 
we're dealing with a dark energy, a negative energy. And we've agreed to have these experiences to know ourselves in all these ways, in this power, in this big energy, okay? So what happens is, is we utilize that, but we cause harm to others. We take advantage of others. If we go really dark, then we sacrifice others. We hurt others. We victimize others, okay? So in order to unravel that, we now we've created a lot of like really a lot of karmic energy, a lot of dark energy, reaping and sowing, so to speak. And what normally happens is, okay, now we dance in all this dark energy. Yep, I know what that's like. Now I was a pot power monger. I tortured people. I, you know, I maimed people. I got all these victims. I'm this powerful being. But the thing is with the powers of darkness is once you open those doors, they don't let you go. Okay, so we make that. Okay, now I decide, well, I'm going to serve the light again. Now I'm done. Okay, so even if I um, do things like, you know, like, like I become the victim, I become victimized by the powers of darkness, and I do know myself in those ways, I've made an agreement with a dark being. Okay, usually it'll be like uh, dark lords or other different conscious frequencies that hold evil energy, dark consciousness energies. Sometimes it'll be with what we call Satan, the devil, Lucifer, that kind of stuff. So when we've done that, which most everyone has, we are not set free. And this is why we ex a lot of people experience they, they're in this lifetime. They're not having memory. They're good people. Their hearts are open. They're kind. They're gentle. They're loving. They don't hurt people. And yet their lives are suffering, illnesses, lack, not enough, um, you know, connections, no love, all of that. That's because they're being interfered with by these powers of darkness. Okay. So it actually takes, I mean, a person can do this on their own if they know how. All right. And oftentimes it takes the intervention of someone who has that kind of skill, who has the ability to set someone free from those agreements and contracts and ends that attack, that interference that continues for eternity until this is released. Okay. So when someone has done that, like for me, what happens is because I do have a connection to the powers of darkness, meaning I have shown that I, that I am not afraid. I have abilities and I can whip their butt for real. Okay. So now, I mean, just to, just so you know, it's like when I come into these dark spaces, if I go into the underworld, if I go into, into the other, uh, into the evil energies, into the powers of darkness into Lucifer, all of these, it's like, game over. There's no battle. There's no fight because I've already proven myself. I've already shown that I've got the ability and I can, and I hold that light. And again, Cynthia, there's nothing greater than the light. Okay. I know within my being viscerally with every fabric of my being, I know the light will always prevail. I know the light is the most potent, powerful frequency of existence itself. Therefore, powers of darkness have no power over me. So that when I show up on behalf of somebody else intervening or whatever, it's like game over. What do you want? We're done. They walk away. Okay. So you as an individual, do you have that ability? Or a healer, another healer, do they have that ability? That's what you need. And that's what you want because we're talking, we're talking the dark stuff. We're talking evil, we're talking black energy, you know, the evilest, darkest energies of all existence. And not everyone is, is unafraid of that. A lot of people are very afraid of those powers. So again, if you are under attack and you've made agreements, you've done different things, this all has to be unraveled and agreements and contract need to be ended by someone who knows what they're doing and someone who can hold the light and someone who is fearless of these powers and these energies. I do want to um, talk a little bit about my experience because I did mention in part three about how I was attacked a uh, big time by dark forces when I, when I became awakened in this lifetime. And, um, you know, I, I've worked with so many different healers and healing techniques for nine years before I found you and none of that really worked. None of them. Yeah, and then yeah. until I found your work, 
And, right. and that's just the truth. And so I, I just want to let people know, um, even though I work for you, Bonnie, you don't actually know anything about me. We don't really right. have like personal yeah. conversations with right. each no, other. We don't. We don't. So all this yeah. stuff, right. We don't. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, throughout this whole podcast, um, she does read me and the, all that stuff is it's fine reading. She really has, she doesn't know anything about me really other than my, my name, how I look, where I live. <laughs> I live in California. She knows that that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. But, that's um, proof. Yeah. Yeah. And so I also don't get like one-on-one freebie sessions no, with her. No. So a lot of the stuff that I talk about, my experience of being healed by Bonnie is mostly through her group clearings. And then sometimes I'll get lucky with, um, she'll, she'll clear a few things here and there when we are talking like on the live Q and a or something like that, she might clear something she sees, but otherwise it, it's all the stuff that I, when I talk about my experience of Bonnie's work is mostly group clearings and her accelerators. Um, and even those, even not working with Bonnie one-on-one very much, I, I've changed so much. And I, I wanted to mention that because I think it's, uh, it's important that people know that um, the, even just the group clearings, mm. they're so powerful. And I, I don't get, I still get harassed a little bit by dark forces. I'll admit that because you know, I, there's just so much. I, I can't expect that just the group clearings that you have to clean up everything. I know certain things you need that one-on-one help. Uh-huh. Right. 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 Um, yes. But but the difference between what it was before, I, mean, I used to get attacked like nightly. And uh-huh. now, you know, maybe I'll get hurt, not even attacked. It's just more like they are annoying, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it. it. It's maybe like once every two months or something like that. It's so infrequent now that mm-hmm. when it does mm-hmm. happen, I'm actually kind of surprised. It's more of a feeling of I'm never afraid of them. It's more that I, I'm kind of confused. Like, why is that still happening? That that's uh-huh. It's uh-huh. sort of that it's... I think they're kind of triggering that part of me, like where I'm just kind of annoyed or, or mm-hmm. um, like, mm-hmm. I thought this was over why it's happening again. That's yeah, a yeah, trigger yeah. within me of something yeah. deeper. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why they still come around too is. Yeah. I, I mean, it just, that means that there, me. yeah, it just means that there's still something that hasn't been unraveled yet. Okay. That's really what okay. it's all about. Period. That's it. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. And. I do want to say something, Cynthia, and I may have mentioned this before, and this is way back in the 80s, um, early, mid, late 80s, early 90s, when I lived in Auburn, I was like the big fish in the little pond, you know what I mean? And I, everybody I knew was a client, so I spent my time, rather than going to movies or dinners or whatever with others, I would spend my time traversing the energy frequencies, because I wanted to know, can these powers of darkness hurt me? Can the devil, can all these negatives, can all this evil, what can it really do? So I would spend time and I would go into these places. And what I discovered was nothing can touch the light of who I am, the core, the eternal me. And that's true for everyone. Nothing didn't get destroy that. Once I knew that, Cynthia, game over. I, you know, I was no longer afraid of any of these dark things. And in my life, when I was younger, I was attacked all the, you know, there's things happening. And prior to that, this is when I was also being attacked, kind of like you. Okay. Things were coming at me, attacking me. And um, I did share before that that ended when I turned around and faced that dark, those demons at one point in 2001, that's when that all ended. And I've never been under attack since. But what I, what I, what I was after was, can I, can they hurt me? Can they cause harm? Can they destroy me? And again, yes, they can phys- hurt, hurt the physical body. All right. And they cannot touch who I am, the light. And this is true for everyone. And again, once I knew that I became fearless. So I began to discover how, People are, you know, attacked, how they give themselves over, they participate, and then you're never set free. So for me personally, I discovered how to unravel all of that, okay? And then coming back to other people that are trying to unravel this kind of stuff, you know, Cynthia, for me, I've always gone after where did this begin? What's the core here? And so I have that ability and I know it's coming from past lives. I know I have done so much in past lives 
of being a healer, being a teacher, being a leader, being a way shower, being some kind of, you know, like um, whatever we did as healer, shamans and all that kind of stuff. And I, and I became a very potent, powerful one. And I also was in the pyramids. I also was an initiate, you know, so seeking enlightenment. So I'm just bringing that forth into this lifetime. And when we're dealing with agreements and contracts with the powers of darkness, basically, you have to not be afraid. You ha- I mean, the moment you're afraid, game over, you lose, okay? And, you know, Cynthia, I'd like to just really quickly, you know, because you were just sharing that you're still, there's still a little bit of stuff happening, you know, where you're still under, you know, they're coming in, attacking you, maybe not attacking, but coming into your space. I'm just going to quickly just clean up the residual kind of stuff that's happening in you, if that feels okay. Okay. And like you said, I've never really done, you know what I mean? Like here and there, but uh, again, we've never done like a full on healing clearing, but I can see there's agreements and contracts because that's also what we're talking about that there's still some energy frequency that's what's up. Got it. So there's a victim energy frequency. That's your, a victim of yours that you victimize. And that's also that door still open. There's still a little bit open right there. So I'm just going to go into that energy connecting with the, the victim and also the powers of darkness that are still attacking you under siege. And there we go. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Now I'm just going to scan. This dance is done. Game over. We're done here. We got it. Okay, we're going to release agreements and contracts from all time, space, dimension, universe, galaxy, lifetimes, realities, black holes, parallel frequencies, realms, all existence itself. Yep, setting Cynthia completely free from the powers of darkness. Yep, that's it. Game over. There we go. Releasing those agreements and contracts, releasing her from karmic debt, releasing her from retribution, releasing her from people that want revenge, punishment, torture her. Distant. Yeah, and I'm going to accelerate this particular victim energy right there of beings that have been under attack that you did. Okay, now I'm going to release them, capture them. Right. Yeah, go get the netting, pull that out, out, out. I'm going to accelerate them into the new paradigm, releasing them of all of that energy, the frequency, the helpless, hopeless, torture frequencies. Be done, be done, be done. Light, 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 light. Be gone, be gone. That's it. Now, the beings that have been after that. Yeah, we done. We're done. Be gone, be gone. Never come back again. Game over. Good. Be done, be done, be done. All energy frequencies dissolve, 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 dissolve. Clear. Good. Now, Cynthia, when you think about that same residue, that same kind of thing, let me know how that feels now. So when you're feeling in, because you there's always, we can always feel, sense something when it's not done, okay? Um, so now when you feel in, let me know what that feels like. Kind of like sad. Mm. Sort of like um, mm-hmm. yeah, a little bit of like I deserve it because I did bad uh-huh. things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so just so everybody understands, as long as she has any kind of emotion, she'll draw some kind of punishment to her, okay? She did bad things, misperceptions. Is this actually Cynthia? No, this is not actually you. This is just Karna. There we go. This is another victim. Oh, this is another perpetrator. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Okay, I'm going to get perpetrators out of your body because that's also what happens. There we go. Light, light, light. Bring the light in. Yeah, that's it. White flame, white flame, perpetrators. Yep, you're released. Yep, released, forgiven, absolved, resolve all, absolute, absolution. Be gone, be gone out of Cynthia. Clear, clear, clear. Go, 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 go. And just feeling that she deserves because mm-hmm, she did bad things. Light, light, light. That's all, dissolve, dissolve. Clear, clear, clear. Be gone, be gone, dissolve, dissolve, dissolve. Good. Okay, good. Now look for that same feeling. Let me know what it feels like. It's a lot better. Like, I can't really find it right now. Yeah. And that's what happens when we've, now Now it can be done. Meaning, when you can't find the feeling, okay, the mind will look for those reactions and thoughts, but it takes about three days and then it will give it up because it can't find them. Okay, that's that's how it works. That was fast, too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, you are. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so I guess um, moving on to the next part of that question is about, you did touch upon this a little bit earlier when you were talking about how in your life, your soul's journey, you incarnated many times in, right. as an initiate, as healers, teachers, all that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And so my question is, um, you, when you... When, I guess when your soul chooses to go into these lifetimes, obviously we talked about how uh, you want uh, your soul wants to 
know itself in all the ways. And so you make agreements and contracts. If you have traumas, you're going to recreate those. And so that, of course, is going to determine what kind of life you end up into. Um, and But I also want to know about whether or not our souls have a personality that it kind of wants to express itself in particular ways and create in the world in particular ways. Uh -huh, uh -huh, so for uh -huh. you, your soul, maybe that's just like a, maybe an archetype or something of, uh -huh. of being a healer. And that's how you want to express itself. So is that uh -huh. another component of how you, how your soul chooses to go into different various lifetimes? Yeah. I mean, we do want to experience everything. Okay. But we do start to have, um, something that becomes who we be, who we are, if that makes sense. Like for me, um, you know, I've had, well, I've had a lot of lifetime, well over thousands of lifetimes. Okay. And of course, starting off with that little amoeba, like everyone. Okay. Then as we continually evolve, then we step into different experiences and something just kind of resonates in a frequency that is who we are. It's kind of like the core of who we are. Okay. And for me, and, you know, everyone's different and the same, only different. Okay. So may, we got many, many healers. All right. Many, 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 many healers. And for me, it became, it had become like the focus. It became the souls of what I became, who I am at a soul level. And therefore I bring it, you know, every, all my experiences, you know, being a shaman, being a witch, being a sorcery or wizard, being a teacher, being a leader, all, you know, all the, it all comes into some way of some kind of healing, some kind of consciousness that brings us more aware and awake to who we really are. And ultimately, I talk about this a lot, Cynthia, but ultimately, we're here to share the gift of who we are, which is that pure energy of love and light, okay? But also in that, like when I'm just being in that energy frequency, my energy really is about waking up. I mean, it's just, it's just what is. It is about liberation, okay? So no matter who I'm with, that's the frequency that I hold. And so even when I'm sharing, just being myself, just being letting my and my whole uh, energy just be who I am, there's always that frequency of holding liberation for all beings, okay? But I'm also a bodhisattva. That means I'm going to keep coming back until all beings are free, okay? That's just, that's my journey, okay? And everybody else has their own journey. It doesn't matter. Nothing really matters. It's just, can we shine and be who we are? And without, you know, without hiding or, or uh, being afraid, but just being who we are. So we're really here to share the gift of ourselves. And, and again, sharing the gift of myself still continually will hold the frequency of liberation for everyone. Okay. So we care, we live that we carry it and everyone kind of goes in an, in their own way. Like even now, when we look at the millions and millions of millions of healers on the planet, and all of their lifetimes and what they have done, you know, to bring teachings, to bring forth healing, to bring forth consciousness. You know, we're all doing what we are, who we are in the very core, in the light of who we are. And it's just that, you know, I don't know. It's like, for me, it's like there's just such a desire for liberation, like severe desire. And in that, I'm going to find what, it, what really works, what really works. And I have to tell you. <laughs> Cynthia, for me, most everything is like, you know, airy fairy. I just can't get behind it. And that's why I never studied with other teachers is because I could feel, nah, you don't have the answers. Nah, you don't have, no, not, uh-uh, nobody, nobody has true answers. So what am I going to do? I'm going to have to go find it myself. <laughs> so Bonnie, my next question is about how can we know what, past life memories that we have are actually past lives or not. Yeah. Um, because for me, I, I know of three past lives, for sure, I know our past lives, it feels very different than the other types of like, let's say I've done some um, hypnosis, like past life regressions, uh -huh. Uh -huh. every yeah. single time I've done those, they never felt like they really were, or I kind of felt like, well, maybe they are, maybe they're not. Um, I also thought that maybe it's my subconscious coming up with like a representation of something deeper 
Mm -hmm. But then there are experiences I had where they were so profound and so Mm -hmm. deep that Mm -hmm. I knew Mm -hmm. there's no doubt in my mind. So how can people have their own experience with this? Yeah. Okay. So I do want to say that if you have like memory, like for example, when I, you know, years ago, I kept having this feeling like, you know, something bad's going to happen to me. Um, and I just, can, I just figured it was a past life, you know, like something was going to come out from behind, I was going to be killed. And I c- kept thinking that's a past life. Okay. It wasn't, it was a discarnate. And most of the time, when people are having what they think is a memory of a past life, probably 99.9% of the time, it actually is an entity remembering their past life. All right. Keep in mind that when we enter this body, our past is invisible to us. It's, it's not, it's inaccessible to us. Okay. And that's a reason for that. We're meant to forget. So sometimes there are those who do have memory. Like I do have actual memories. Like I've been in Egypt. I mean, I, I've been in Egypt in the temples, high priestess, and those memories got activated by being in those places, but also by, um, um, you know, being in the in the experience of all of that so for example when like for you you had experiences where you went into a past life and you know doing hypnosis hypnothera- hypnosis so sometimes it's an actual past life and other times again you can still be accessing somebody else's past life and it the best way to really truly know is this true and real is it your past life is like, for example, I actually did a past life and I was a man and I had a wife and, but I could, everything that was happening, it was like full, every, the experience was so full on. It was like my whole being remembering the whole body memory, the soul memory. And I knew that was a true past life. Okay. Other times, you know, I might have a memory again, like that experience, something bad, that when I, that discarnate was removed, that memory was gone. And that's almost 90, like I said, that's most of the time what really happens. So again, we are not really remembering our past lives. And when we think we are, it's usually a discarnate. The best way to access a past life is through going into the subconscious, having somebody trained, taking you back through time into those past incarnations. And even then, the best way to know it's really you and happening is you, you experience it like it's really happening, full body, full on. So that's the best way to really know that you're really having a past life experience. You know, what's uh, interesting is you talked about how um, our past life memories could get triggered by being in the location mm-hmm. of, of mm-hmm. where it happened. And one of my past lives that I know for sure is, well, I was in Eastern Europe, I was in Sarajevo, and I knew I had to go to a particular place that was not even in the tourist area. It was, Uh it was on the map. I was like, I don't know what this place is, but I have to go there. Uh And it was, I had no idea even how to get there. I just walked. I just started walking. It was like something took over. Yeah. 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 And then when I got there, it's like, it was like lightning struck or something. I was just, yeah. All these memories flooded to me. Right. 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And like, I know that in my live stream, one of my themes of um, way my soul has expressed itself is as a warrior. And uh-huh. that was a particular warrior lifetime oh, I had yeah. in Sarajevo. So it yeah. was a traumatic wow. uh, life as well. So it was something I needed to experience. So yeah. I, I know that that for sure was, it was just so, there was no question. Yeah. So yeah, um, exactly. from what you're yeah. telling me, that's, that's the tell. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess let's end with a that exercise of um, connecting with the pure awareness within. And mm. what, when we do this, like, um, what is the benefit of <laughs> connecting with this part of us? <laughs> okay, the benefit is this. When we connect with that part of that, that us, the true energy of us, what we discover is there's no agitation, there's no belief systems, there's no good, bad, right, wrong. What we begin to discover is the moment we lean out, we go into ego, we can feel it, it becomes an agitation. So it's helping us to really recognize and understand and live more purely from the heart rather than from our ego, from our mind, from our dysfunctions, from our wounding misperceptions, okay? I mean, everyone on some level wants to be happy, okay? If we live in the ego, if we live in the wounding, there's no happiness there, I guarantee it. 
we live here, we live in the heart, we're expressing our true energy, our true self, our true joy, our true light, our true love. And it's absent the wounding, absent misperception. So it's really the authentic us that we're experiencing when we're leaning out and we're living in the ego. That is not who we are. It's not us. You know, and what happens then is we all, every, all, all of us want the real person. Where's the real you? I can feel you're not being authentic. I can feel you're not being real. I just want the real you. Well, they'll get the real you when you're coming from here, which almost no one does. Okay. All right. So this is what I do. I take people in. We're going to just do a little, just come on in. All right. So just close your eyes, bring your awareness because you can feel your awareness kind of in your head. Now you're going to just imagine that you literally are taking your eyes right down to your chest, to your heart chakra. Just bring in your whole awareness right there and imagine you're literally looking out into the world from your heart chakra. Now, from there, basically, you're going to be coming back even further and deeper into the core of your being, basically like into the seat of the soul. And you're going to go in looking for a, a white light, kind of like a brilliant, bright white light. Everyone has it. I don't care if it's the minutest pinhead. Everyone has that light. Taking your awareness now, going right into that light. Just, just imagine just going right into that light. And awareness can go into the smallest, smallest energy frequency size, and it can go into the vastest. So right now you're going right into that light of you. Now what you're actually touching in is your own awareness, your own consciousness, creator consciousness, God consciousness. That is what this light is. We are all creator incarnate. So right here, you are now in that frequency of that light. Let that light expand, just expand it, just expand, let it get brighter and bigger, fuller. And just being here now, and I want you just to notice, paying attention, that there is no agitation in this light. There's no desires, there's no wants, there's no needs, there's no hopes, there's no dreams. It's pure awareness. This is God consciousness. This is God awareness, the no thing the nothing. Okay. And from here, everything arises. But now what I want you to do is as you're just being in this, being in the state of consciousness, I want you to have a desire. Maybe it's something you want somebody to do something, or maybe there's something you want that you're not getting. I want you to let that happen just for a moment. But more importantly, I want you to notice that the moment you do, you'll start to feel an agitation. Because that is your ego. The ego is moving away from you. It is coming out of, you are coming out of that pure, pure conscious light that you actually are. That pure love and light that has no judgment, that doesn't find fault, that doesn't need to change anything or make anything good, bad. So the moment you, you have a desire, you can feel an agitation. Now let's just come right back into the heart chakra come back into that light frequency, the core of who you are. And in there, there isn't the desire. And it doesn't mean that you won't live life. What it means is you will have more pure energy. You will be more authentically true and real. And if we're hungry, we're going to eat. If we need to bathe, we're going to bathe. But it isn't going to be a manipulation or a judgment or fault finding or making ourselves wrong. Like, for example, let's just say with food, Okay, I know I, I know I don't want to eat carbohydrates. Let's just say that I have an allergy or whatever. Okay, now that's a thought. That's a belief. So now there's an agitation coming from that pure, pure heart, pure frequency. I'll do whatever serves my highest good, and I will have no thought around it or about it. And again, let's just come back, come back to that place within the very core, that beautiful, brilliant, bright light, pure energy of pure, unconditional love and light. And then now just imagine looking out into the world, into everything that's happening, the, the war, the, the, the natural disasters, the dying of people, others. But as you stay right here in that light, it's just a pure frequency of love and light, not finding fault, not making wrong. You are naturally organically knowing the soul of every journey, the, the journey of every soul. And 
There's nothing to do. There's nothing to change. There's no pain. There's no regret. There's no suffering. You are just holding pure frequency of love and light and witnessing the evolution of creation itself, which is every human being. Now you're just shining that love and light out to everyone, activating their love and light so that they too can grow exponentially and learn their soul lessons and they have their soul journey, whether they live or not, whether they pass through this body, go into the light. Everyone is a divine soul. Everyone is evolving. Everyone wants liberation, joy, happiness. And right here, right now, you're just holding that frequency within your residing in your own love and light. You are residing in your own beautiful divine frequency. And there's nothing to do. Practicing and playing being right here will help you to unravel, will bring more clarity, understanding to you as a soul evolving. So everyone can access this. It is within every being. I don't care how dark they become, how evil they become. Every being has that light. We are all creator incarnate. We are all divine beings. We hold that frequency in the very core. So now I'm just letting go of all of these images, pictures, bringing your awareness right back up into your head, feeling your consciousness back behind your eyes, and then be right here right now. Bonnie, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And that's all the questions that I have. And uh, thank you so much for this amazing series that we did of the past lives and souls journey. And thank you everybody for tuning in. I hope you all got a lot from this. I know I did. And um, Bonnie, is, are there any last words you want to say about to wrap up the whole four part the series? Past lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I know that people have their belief systems and that's all they are, their belief systems. And, you know, direct experience is how we learn and grow. And everyone has past lives and it's okay if you don't want to believe it, don't want to own it, don't want to accept it, all is well. And practice coming into that light because the truth shall be revealed. So if you're willing, please tag me in your social media and share with me what you think some of your past lives are. Let's have fun with this. Tell me all about your past lives that you're remembering. So again, tag me on your social media and let's have fun. All right, thank you everybody for tuning in. Remember, this is Consciousness Unleashed podcast. We're on all the uh, podcast platforms. If you're listening to this on Apple, please leave a review. If you're on YouTube, uh, like this video, subscribe if you're new comment below let us know what you think and you can find all of bonnie's work at spiritualacceleration.com links will be in the description below and thank you once again for joining us and we'll see you next time all right